Hi there, guys. This is Vinny Chopra again. I hope you are ready for me with a great guest. You know, Abil is here by itself, and you're going to love him, love him. As a matter of fact, I come to you live now two or three times a week. I don't know if you are liking the content. If you are liking it, give five star reviews, go on iTunes, and give the thumbs up and everything. Share this podcast and others. I try to spend lots and lots of time bringing great quality material to you so that you can get your path to a greater entrepreneurship in real estate. So today we're going to talk really great things. You know, our guest has really started in single family and flipping thousands of homes, 2,000, 2,000 single family homes. And then also, you know, raised over $60 million. Guys, you want to stay and go through the end. We might even break this interview into two parts or three parts as we get going into mind shift and into what took and what you know were the challenges the whole thing we're going to talk a lot more about why do we you know really invest you know and how can we move from one angle to another uh, i'm looking at some of the questions that you know i will i'll be asking how to create you know cash flow monthly so you could travel you could work abroad and then you retire and spend money you know on your hobbies that's all we all want don't we right and how to get you know side hustle in real estate going which a lot of my followers are w2 people they're professionals they want to get into it and how to make extra cash by raising uh, friends and family money that's we're going to dig into that if you have not done so yet you know, you definitely want to know about that. Friends and family have so much money around, you know, and you could harness that. And how to manage multifamily remotely while you travel the world. I love it. You know, I've been doing it from <laughs> here, sitting in my office for 14, 15 years in San Francisco. And I cover all over USA and all that in India. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. Yay, Abil. Hey, brother. So let me introduce you formally. Can I? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Abel uh, is uh, started in his real estate career in 2005. It's 2022 coming up. 17 years of experience you're going to hear as a property appraisal while simultaneously increasing in the residential single family home sector after flipping over 2,000 single family, like I mentioned, decades of residential sales transform into multifamily investments, syndication with his diverse experience and rehabilitation, rehabilitation of the properties and assets management. Abil has raised over 60 million. It's very exciting, very exciting. And then you also started a management company, Abil, and then you also founded United Dream Real Estate in 2014. Man, you are a busy man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> welcome, thank welcome. You. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a. Uh, it, it has been a, a, a very busy path, but it's it's been very exciting. It's it, it's it's been a natural growth. I I could say, people like to say organic, but it, it kind of happened naturally. And where I'm at now is it didn't happen overnight. But um, <laughs> I did just to make a correction. It's not 2,000 uh, flips. It's been two. It was 200 doors. I evolved. Uh, I evolved yeah. from. The appraisal business and then naturally went into flipping houses and then from there the, the you know the real estate company and now apartment syndication has been the last couple of years are you know my passion excellent 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 tell me a little yeah. bit more about you where did you grow up and what's your humble background or whatever <laughs> and then how you got into and what were some of the challenges mentally and otherwise, you know, financially and others, yeah, that you have to overcome to get to the place where you are now, you know? Well, yeah, I am first generation from uh, Cuba. My parents are immigrants. They came in 1980. Yeah. I was very lucky that they, they came in 1980 in a big migration that was very famous here in South Florida. It was called El, El Mariel. Uh, it, was a, it was an era yeah. where um, Fidel Castro basically allowed people to exit the island in masses. Uh, so we came in multiple boats, every masses of people were coming in boats. My parents were very lucky and fled the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came to this great country that uh, set us with open hands. And uh, at a very early age, uh, I learned very fast what it is to you know, be around a working family. Both of my parents, uh, hardworking was something that was implemented day one in my life. And 
Uh, my dad was in the carpentry business. He was a carpenter in construction. And I would go with him at a very early age to a lot of the construction projects, uh, especially during summer school. Instead of going to summer school, I was going to work with my dad, you know, 12, 13 years old. And, oh, 12, 13. I was going yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Child oh. labor. The child labor. <laughs> uh, I used to help my dad. And, and, uh, and that's how it slowly I started learning about construction. Uh, but I also knew that it, there was things in the construction business I did not like to do. Uh, but I, I always was mesmerized by the size of the projects. And I was always thinking like, how do people buy this? Uh, you know, I, I, the financial education, my parents didn't have that. They were too busy trying to pay the bills as an early immigrant. Yeah. But the financial education was something I needed to teach myself to be able to understand how do you buy these big buildings? How do you buy this real estate? Like all the moving parts was something that I was always interested in learning. And that's what led me to the path of real estate. Uh, got into a property appraisal, valuing properties. I had a nice two year run in the 2006, 2008 before the market crashed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that was a really young real estate learning lesson. And when the market crashed, uh, I went from having 50 to 60 appraisals a month to having two or three. So reassessment really quick of what to do. Yeah, yeah. So immediately started uh, identifying uh, opportunities in flipping houses. Uh, they were extremely cheap. Um, I wish I would have known how much value they would have gained over time. I was very young, didn't understand that. Uh, so I kind of rode the wave, but didn't really take as much of, uh, of uh, opportunity as I should have bought and hold. But it was fine. That was the path that I took. Started flipping and flipping houses from 2009. So, you know, to the last four years, I evolved naturally into multifamilies because it made so much sense. What uh, state did you flip them and all? Like they were these smaller houses, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, or how? It, it start. It started uh, every uh, any any. Well, 2009, 2010, they were, they were so cheap. So I was buying single family homes, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, two co small condos, uh, small duplexes and triplexes. Uh, there was deals everywhere. Yeah. Um, but there was also a lot of scared money. A lot of people didn't want to invest. They they just took a huge hit. Uh, but it just, it was just, it was just, I remember I used to call REO agents and that was the era when REO agents used to actually pick up your phone call. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that era where you could actually talk to you an REO get agent. Get rid of them, yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah, take it off my hands. Yeah. Uh, later on in life, it just became so competitive that you couldn't, you know, it was hard to pick up deals. Uh, but it was a nice education that I got uh, mm -hmm. on that downturn. Wonderful. How, who introduced you to multifamily? What shift did you make? And somebody must have triggered it in your mind. Well, what triggered it was I was living a life on a roller coaster with buying and flipping properties. It was a roller coaster. I, one day, I, one day I was rich. The next day I had all my money was all invested. No cash flow, no money coming in, yeah. empty properties waiting for a buyer to, to buy it, um, leveraging hard money loans to buy because you're doing volume. Um, it was very, it, it became very stressful and I was always worried in my mind as, okay, what happens if a downturn comes out overly leveraged on a bunch of vacant properties that are selling, they mm -hmm. are selling now, but what if something happens? Yeah. I will be down and I'll, I'll be completely, uh, I'll be completely wiped out. And I was also raising money with friends and family. It's, it's easy to take risk with your personal money, but when you yeah. have like, family involved yes. and I started, it, it was stressing me out. I was like, I can't continue living investing in single families out of no income producing property. And then I bought a duplex and then I bought a fourplex. I rented those out oh, and then I got the little taste of that income. And I was like, I like this. I like this. It's paying my mortgage. I'm making a little profit. It's not much, but it's paying my car. It's paying my mortgage. How do I do this? And how do I get bigger? And, and it just gradually took its course. And then I found myself uh, a bit stressed out. I had like 35, 40 duplexes and triplexes spread all over South Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, my maintenance guy was running everywhere. I'm running everywhere. I go, okay, this has to be a smarter way of doing this. Mm -hmm. And then I, I started looking at syndications and YouTubing every video possible. I, I learned everything through YouTube. Oh, that's honest truth. You know, that's the biggest, biggest teacher. Everything. YouTube and Google, I say, you know, <laughs> they are free and podcasts, of course, you know, it's all podcasts, free. correct. Yeah, podcasts it's incredible. Are... Everything I've learned it through there because I didn't have, uh, I didn't have syndicators for large apartments around my circle at that moment. So I needed to, I needed to learn how do they buy this? How do they do this? And it was all online. It just, I just kept absorbing everything. 
you know, just everyone like, like you just putting out their information for free. Yes. And by doing that, I was able to learn the business. Oh, thank you. No, that's yeah. one of my passion at this stage yeah. in, in my life to really spread the word around, around the globe. Actually, my book, the syndication made easy. I got 149 five star reviews in India. Here. That's awesome. Over here, That's I awesome. have close to 500 positive reviews, reviews now, you know, praise That's the awesome. Lord. People like that book, but you know, you're yeah. right. It's the knowledge because what somebody wants to learn, somebody has already done it. So why to reinvent the wheel, right? You know, I yeah. say, yeah. and then the fear comes, big time fear comes. I don't want to step on, you know, go uh, the mines, right? And get blown yeah. up. Things yeah, like the limited beliefs. I, I had a lot of those, a <laughs> yeah. lot of limited beliefs. Yeah. I, I yeah. was my own enemy, not, not knowing that, you know, that.